Well, I'm here today with uh, Dr. David Semeraro, who's a consultant histopathologist at the Royal Derby Hospital in the United Kingdom. And um, welcome, David. Thank you. Yes, hello. Um, what we're going to talk about today is a brief introduction to tumour pathology, and what we're going to cover is the nomenclature around uh, tumours. So what the words used are to say things, uh, a benign tumour, a malignant tumour, and uh, associated things like that. So, um, David, um, tell us a bit about tumour, an introduction to tumour pathology. Um, let's begin by just defining the term tumour. Um, and uh, in its simplest sense, this is uh, from the Latin, which means a swelling. So any mass lesion or swelling which may be uh, seen by the patient either externally or indeed that distorts an organ internally can be described as a tumour. And it's important to, to note that in itself, the term tumour doesn't imply anything about the behaviour of this mass lesion. So something like an abscess on the skin could be a tumour. Absolutely. Or a hematoma is essentially a tumour. Indeed, yeah. that's, that's right. So it doesn't imply anything about the nature of the lesion. Okay, so uh, in this talk, what we're trying to do then is to introduce and define commonly used terms around tumour pathology, and especially with regard to predicting the natural history, because when we examine a tumour, obviously often removed by a surgeon, what we need to know is how is that tumour likely to behave in the future and how can we manage the patient uh, to the best uh, best of our ability. Mm -hmm. And we may, towards the end of the talk, also just in passing mention some other uh, techniques that can be used, apart from just looking down a microscope, as it were, to try and assess that behaviour of the tumour. Right. So we can first of all think about how we try to classify tumours in the broadest sense on one of two uh, sort of ways, in one of two ways. The first is uh, either by the embryological der derivation and the second is by cell cycle dynamics. Those sound like very grandiose terms but let's make them a little simpler and simply think about them in this way. That is that when we look at an embryo we can think about the way in which the cells very early on in embryonic development yeah. try to differentiate, that is become different cell types um, and these can be either cells which are uh, on air surfaces, that is ectodermal or endodermal surfaces, yeah. or they can be connective tissue cells, as it were, which are mesodermal. Okay, so ectodermal and endodermal terms that always confuse me. Okay, so when you have an embryo which is developing very early on, it obviously develops an external surface very early, which is the ectodermal surface, but also there are lining cavities which also have a lining, and those are endodermal surfaces. Okay, so anything on the outside, so your eventual thing would be skin, exactly, be ectodermal, and yeah. but. Um, let's say peritoneum would be endodermal yeah. as would be something like the lining of the gut yeah so that's all the bits on the out that okay. seems easy and anything enough. in between is mesoderm well <laughs> i don't know why they don't say that in the first place okay <laughs> now unfortunately there are other sort of um, other other cell types to consider in the in, in the embryo uh, which are if you like specialist uh, in type the first is the neural crest cell which we won't draw, sort of dwell on that for too long, but these are specialist cells that, as the name implies, come from the very early part of the neural tube, and also there are cells which are destined to become the germ cells, that is, either uh, ovaries, uh, oocytes in the ovary, or spermatozoa in the testis. Mm -hmm. So we need to think about those, because those, those, of course, can also potentially give rise to tumours. Okay. So that's the embryological side. As far as the cell cycle is concerned, uh, we can divide the, the, the body's cells into three broad groups. And again, this is very relevant and useful in thinking about tumours in general. The first is, is called the, the labile cell group. And here I'm talking about a cell population which even in the adult is constantly turning over. Mm. So we have a population of cells, again, the skin is a good example, where we're losing skin cells uh, from the surface, but we're replenishing them from the basal part of the epithelium. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, gut would be another good example. Uh, absolutely. So similarly, the gut lining is also continually being shed, but new cells are being formed from the crypts and the glands yeah. of the gut. So that's the labile cell group. The, then let's move to the, just for a moment, to the bo bottom of that list, to the permanent cell group. And here are cells which actually aren't in cell cycle. So the theory here, at least, is that the cells have lost the capacity to divide. And once you've lost one of these cells, they're lost for good. Unfortunately, this tutorial has to be modified in the in the light of modern ger um, stem cell research because mm -hmm. that has changed some of yep. this, unfortunately. Yep. But uh, in broadly speaking, there are cell cell types which are permanent and not replaced. And then finally, and an example that would be would be bra brain, uh, would be brain cells. absolutely brain cells and yeah. muscle cells yeah. are very good examples. So we're we're losing brain cells uh, yep. at the moment, and they will never be replaced. Sadly. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, that's yeah. true. And muscle is another good example. Right. Um, okay, so that's the permanent cell group. And then finally, we have the stable cell group, which are somewhere in between. Here's a cell population which doesn't normally divide, but hasn't forgotten how to do so. So if, for any reason, circumstances change and they need to be kicked into mitotic activity and division, they can do so. Okay, so and, a good, the... and a good example of that is the liver. The liver. A very nice example where a regenerative change in the liver is really quite dramatic, yeah. should it need be needed. And uh, in, so, so certainly in, in liver surgery, you can take away a, a large part of the liver, and when you c and do a scan six or eight weeks later, the liver has not the right shape, but an odd yeah, shape, but it's, it's largely grown back in yeah, terms it's, of volume. It's quite remarkable about yeah. how, many, yeah. how much it can do. That's quite yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so that's, as I say, in terms of cell types and embryology, we can think of tumours in that sense. Let's also introduce some other terms uh, and concepts which are closely related to tumour pathology that are, are worth, are worth uh, knowing. First of all, to contrast the terms hyperplasia and hypertrophy. Hyperplasia briefly means an increase in tissue or organ size due to an increase in cell number, whereas hypertrophy means an increase in tissue or organ size due to an increase in cell size, but not cell number. So here the cells are getting bigger, but there aren't any more cells. Mm -hmm. And if you think back for a moment, in fact, if we just look back for a moment to the, the, uh, the labile and the, and, these, and, the, uh, and the permanent cell groups, that ties in very nicely because a labile cell group will undergo hyperplasia very easily, whereas a permanent cell group will undergo hypertrophy because it doesn't have the capacity to do it. And you said a, an example of permanent cells with muscle, so you go to the gym and they become... Pumping iron gives you hypertrophic muscle, absolutely. Right, very good. Histopathology in action. Okay, so that's great. So, so that's those terms. Metaplasia, what do we mean by that? Well, a cell type, and usually this term is used uh, in describing epithelial surfaces, Metaplasia means when an epithelium changes its nature from being one type of epithelium to another type. And importantly, this term doesn't imply any premalignant potential. Mm. It simply says, for example, that a, a glandular epithelium is changing to a squamous epithelium or sometimes vice versa. What, what, what was stimulated to do that? Um, well, uh, th certainly there's a good example in, in, the, in the gastrointestinal system where in the lower end of the esophagus, for example, where there's acid reflux then the, the lower end of the esophagus is usually a squamous epithelium, but under the influence of acid, it erodes and then replaces itself with mucous glandular epithelium, which is better suited to counteract the acid. So that change from the squamous to the glandular epithelium is a good example of, of metaplasia, so-called Barrett's esophagus. Yeah. So there's a change in the environment of the cells which they, they're doing to protect themselves, perhaps. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So that's metaplasia. Dysplasia, uh, again, we're thinking here in the epithe of epithelia, and we're saying now that the epithelium is abnormal in its maturation. So that's the key concept, that the epithelium is now no longer showing normal maturation. The basal cells of the epithelium are not maturing nicely as they reach the surface. The glands are not forming normally as they mature towards the surface. And we can think about different degrees of dysplasia. So when you look down the microscope at some normal, it looks normal, and then dysplasia, it looks different from normal but it's not as far as cancer yet absolutely and so what we're saying is that the degree of dysplasia can be graded if you like to low grade and high grade um, but we looking at the simple things in cells that we recognize as being uh, abnormality which is an increase in the size of the nucleus mm -hmm. a bigger nucleus compared to the cell size more mitoses mitoses where they shouldn't be and generally more variable nuclei so all these features tell us that the epithelium is not maturing normally but it's, and it, it's dysplastic. But quite rightly, as you say, the distinction here between dysplasia and, if you like, a proper established cancer is that the basement membrane, the, the membrane on which the epithelium sits, is still intact. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, and neoplasia, this is a very broad term, simply translated as new tissue. Mm. So really, neoplasm, again, is pre pretty much uh, synonymous, I suppose, with tumour, saying simply, here is a growth uh, a type of uh, uh, the reason for a, a tumor swelling in this particular instance is a is a neoplasm, uh, and it means that there's new tissue formed. Again, it doesn't imply necessarily whether it's a benign or malignant process. Yeah. Okay. And finally, desmoplasia, a term that's maybe used not so frequently, but this is, this is to do with the the tissue response, the background tissue response to the presence of a tumor of a neoplasm, and. Broadly speaking, although not always the case, broadly speaking, when a tumour is infiltrating a, a tissues, those tissues have a response which we describe as a desmoplastic response. So it's a good marker, not an absolute marker, but a good marker for a malignancy, that is that the tumour is in, inducing desmoplasia in the background.
Okay. So uh, these are obviously uh, fundamental terms for uh, histopathology. So yes. just uh, just to, can we recap? Can we go from the top and just uh... certainly? Okay. So let's just then uh, define them once 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 more through. So firstly, hyperplasia, an increase in tissue or organ size due to an increase in cell number. Uh, hypertrophy, an increase in tissue or organ size due to an increase in cell size but not cell number. Metaplasia, a change in epithelial type but normal in maturation, so change from one epithelial type to another and not in, in implying any pre-malignant potential. Dysplasia, an abnormality of epithelial maturation which may indeed be a precursor to malignancy. Neoplasia, any new tissue type as it were, which may or may not be malignant in nature. And finally, desmoplasia, a reaction of adjacent tissues to the presence of a tumour, often because of its infiltrative nature. Okay, well thank you David, that's, that's very clear.